Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. In this video, we are exploring ways that you can upcycle flat plastic packaging, this type of thing, cellophane bags. A lot of things we purchase nowadays come wrapped or protected in this packaging and I tried to reuse it as much as possible, but I also wanted to explore some ways that I can upcycle it and create something with it. And let me tell you, the ideas are endless. Today, I'm sharing a minimum of 13 things that you can make. So let's jump right in. Starting with idea number one, which is fidget bookmarks. I'm calling them fidget bookmarks because they have the sequence on the other side. And my daughter loves this kind of thing. She loves all fidget toys and stuff like that. And this was just fun to kind of try and move from one end to the other. All right, I'm going to stop with the crinkling noise now. So basically, all I did here is I popped in some of my ribbon, pretty ribbon that I have, something like this. I think I found this by the looks of it at an art shop and it's just placed in between some, you know, packaging. That's what we're talking about today. Just like so, I've sewn around and I've sewn three sides actually. And then before sewing it shut completely, I popped in some sequins inside. And that's it. That's all there is to it. It's as simple as that. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. On this one here, I created something a little bit different. I had some folds happening within my plastic packaging. So I had this kind of thing and then I folded it in half and then I put the ribbon in that one there and then I sew it around and I have this pocket, right? So I was just kind of messing around with that idea. I'm not really entirely sure what you can use this pocket for, but I had an idea to make a pouch, which I didn't end up doing. I don't have anything that's this pretty that's really wide to make it into a pouch. But that would be pretty cool where you have one side pretty material and other side you have sequins. So it really all depends on the kind of packaging that you have available at home. But how cool is that? Idea number two is a pencil case. Well, it's really a pouch. I mean, it can be anything case. I'm calling it a pencil case because clearly I've got pens in there. And there we have it. How cool does this look? And it's really easy to make, even though it kind of looks somewhat elaborate. It really isn't. And it can be closed this way. And it can, you know, have kind of embellishments on both sides. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this. Going forward, I'm going to try and be a little bit less crinkly. But we are using plastic, so, you know, there's going to be a lot of crinkle in this video. All right, how did I make this? So for this kind of thing, I use one of these larger pockets. Um, what do you call them? Sleeves, plastic sleeves, packaging, whatever. So we have a large sleeve. You can make, you can make a smaller kind of version of this. It doesn't have to be a pencil case. It really depends, again, on the packaging that you have. So we have this. Then I used... These are my, my leftovers, but just to demonstrate, I use a little bit of scrapbooking paper, which I folded in half and I did it on both sides. And then I applied it to the sides of the back. Actually, I might as well demonstrate. All right, here we go. So I have my scrapbook paper, which I have cut in half and I want them to be the same size, uh, exactly the same size. So they correspond to each other. They're kind of same size here in the finished product. And then I folded them both in half, just like so. And now we're going to get them on both ends, just like this. So at this stage, what I like to do is I'm going to apply. You can, if you don't have a sewing machine, you're going to struggle because 
you know, it's very hard to close off the edges without a sewing machine on plastic because the glue won't work. Uh, it can be done like if you have a fusing machine or I don't know, something like that. All right, so the double-sided tape is there in the middle because I'm trying to avoid my sewing machine touching the double-sided tape. All right, perfect. That's one side. We're going to repeat on this side. Now, if you'll notice, I didn't, I left myself extra space, you know, to work with on both sides because I can cut that off. We didn't need to be precise at this stage. So here, what you can do is you can just close this off with double-sided tape if you wish to. You don't have to sew. The sewing is important for this section here. So you can, if you don't have a sewing machine, I mean, there's always ways you can use a needle and thread and slow stitch, right? Just one stitch there. It can be done. I crafted for many years without a sewing machine. All right, so now that you are here, so the next thing that I'm going to do is, you can see here the sewing. I just like to sew two lines here, here, and the same thing over here. Just two lines on each side. So at this stage, I'm going to uh, tie knots at the end. Just here, I like to bring all of the strings onto the inside so, uh, so that my work is neat. And then once the strings are on the inside, I'm gonna tie a knot and then chop it off. And that way I'm ensuring that nothing's gonna be unraveling down the track. And here we go. We are ready to move on to the next step, which you guessed it, is to pop these two together and seal the sides shut. Side note, I just wanted to tell you, in case you've been questioning my sanity so far, this is going to confirm your suspicions. I keep all of the thread. This is a whole lot of thread, you know, over the last, I don't know when did I start keeping it, maybe a couple months ago. Every time I snip a little bit of thread off, it goes into my jar. I kept thinking I'm going to have, you know, an idea for this. And I do have an idea, so that's going to be coming out soon so you can start collecting your thread and in fact i have a project that i did that i'm going to show you in this video using the thread okay i'm going to take this to my sewing machine and i'm just going to go from see how there's nothing here i'm going to go from top here straight down to seal the edge you can choose to just go all the way down as well down here which i might do because i think it looks quite nice and finished rather than stopping at the edges here. So all I'm gonna do, as you can see on this one, I'm gonna sew these three sides completely shut, but I have to make sure that this doesn't move out of the way. And I also wanted to point out that this is two pieces of plastic because we're using one sleeve that we have folded in half. So in case if you're kind of questioning the durability of this, you have, of course, it makes sense that you are questioning it, of course, because if the bag kind of breaks, then that's it really for your project. But there's definitely a difference in weight, just like with paper, there's a difference in weight for these things. This one, for example, is a lot flimsier, so that's one thing to look out for. And also, you know, using layers of them. You might even want to layer a few, I'm just saying, like you might want to use two for this project. So I'm going to make sure that everything is aligned before I kind of go to my sewing machine because I don't want any of this to move. And here we go. How cool is that? Done. So it's not perfect there. It has been a little bit of mortgage. I mean, let's be honest here, right? This isn't something that's going to last your lifetime. Like this isn't something you're going to be passing on to your grandkids, right? So really just have fun with it. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. And now for the closure, you can have a little Velcro closure here. You can have a little magnet in here. Or what I did on this one, it's not, nothing is really holding it closed. It's just the way the project is made. It kind of seems like it's something is holding it closed, but actually it's not. All I did for this one here is use the button. So this uh, shank button, but I remove the back of the button and then I have this flat, beautiful thing that I can stick onto projects. And you can really make a fun, you can have uh, a row of buttons, you know. What else have I got? Like whatever we kind of put on there, it's gonna look pretty cool. Let's look at it, how cool is this? You can keep it in your, in your planner or you can have your stickers in there. Oh, look at that, perfect size. 
keep your stickers in there, your washi tape samples or anything that's flat, obviously. Why do I feel the need to demonstrate? I don't know, just in case if you're in two minds about it. It's most definitely worth doing. I love this one. Okay. Moving on to idea number three, which is to preserve dried flowers. How cool do these look? All right, so I have a box here with all sorts of dried flowers that mostly my mum did, and they don't have to be dried flowers. It can be leaves like this, for example, or like this, how cool. And I'm quickly going to demonstrate, perhaps I'm gonna use one of these, and you're going to need some type of a frame, I have this one, you can make your own frame as well. And of course you need your plastic. So first thing, I'm gonna open the plastic. And first thing I'm gonna do is glue my frame onto the plastic. So you can use glue if you have glue that's gonna stick onto plastic. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna use double-sided tape. This double-sided tape that I'm about to use is a little bit too wide for this frame, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how you can fix that problem. You can obviously cut it off at this stage, but it might gum up your scissors, so I choose to do it at a later stage. I'll show you how. We're not gonna be cutting it off. Okay, now that my double-sided tape is applied, I'm gonna remove the backing. And now this part that's too much, I'm just gonna fold it back in on itself. Just like that. And repeat on all four sides. Okay, lovely. And now I'm going to glue this directly onto my plastic. So we have two pieces here. I'm going to glue it on top of the first piece. There we go. And now for my dried flower. It's not necessary, but I do I like to uh, I like I do like to apply a little bit of glue just on the back. I actually think I like the back better than the front. But anyway, a little bit of glue just on the back and a dries clear. You can see on this one, I had a little bit of glue here and on the stems there, and it just dries completely clear. So now that the glue is applied, I'm gonna pop it inside the frame in between, right? And I'm gonna find the correct positioning. I can have it like this. This flower, it's not really translating beautifully in the video, but it actually doesn't look quite as dark as it does in the video. So here we go, that's what we have now. I'm gonna chop this off and here's what I have so far. So now we have to glue this to this and you can, again, use double-sided tape or you can use a glue, some type of a glue that's going to stick plastic to plastic. I'm not sure if this one does. If you have two identical frames, it's, it will be nice to frame the back as well or you can use washi tape on the back to hide you know, the ugliness of the back. I'm just gonna go in with double-sided tape. So just make sure that if, if you're using glue or double-sided tape, make sure you're not applying it on the inside of the frame. Remove all the backings. And now we do have that extra double-sided tape there, but I'm just gonna cut it off with my scissors and then gently pop it down, making sure that there's no like air bubbles and whatnot. There we go. And now I'm just gonna cut around all the way to the edge of the frame and here it is done i wish that you could see perhaps this is a bit more true to how it actually looks this is the back and i really love the fact that the flower kind of goes over the edge here there's that one and look how cool i just thought this is my favorite one absolutely stunning so beautiful this one i used glue and even though it dries clear it kind of you see this here it kind of leaves those smudges which kind of bugged me a little bit. I mean, you wouldn't have noticed it unless until I kind of pointed it out, but that's the glue option. And then look at this beauty. Okay, that's that one. Moving on to idea number four, which is a journal cover. Ooh, I love it. So easy to do. Look at this. I have found an actual little journal. You see that? But the cover, this is all the cover is. That's all it is plastic packaging and a little bit of, what is this? Some type of a lace on the inside. This is now really being true to the junk journal world where you are repurposing, reusing, upcycling, all that sort of stuff. So you need your material. In this case, it was lace. Here we can do whatever, you know. I'm just going to talk through this process because it's so easy. Pop your thing inside the plastic. And now all you would need to do is take it to your sewing machine 
and so it completely shut. And then obviously remove the excess plastic and then you fold it in half and you have your little journal cover. That's so cool and you know, I mean, you can make a journal cover out of anything. It doesn't have to be using plastic packaging, but it's just an idea. I wasn't planning to, but I'm going to go and sew around this and I'll be right back. The thing is, with plastic, when you're sewing around it, it moves, it slides, it does all sorts of things. It's tight here and then as you're sewing, it bunches up up here. All of these things, try and avoid if you can by holding it in place when you're sewing. You know, you can have the help of clips and stuff like that. The bunching up does happen anyway and it's really no big deal i don't know if you can see it here it's this one's pretty good actually but don't get discouraged by that i'm gonna go and sew this one and see how it turns out actually what i'll do because you already know how to make a journal cover you just sew all four sides and that's it for this one i'm going to hold this down here i'm gonna sew straight across there and also the same on the other side and then i'm going to close it like this and I'm going to sew the sides and I'm going to create a little pouch. And here we go. Top and bottom is sewn. So I'm going to remove the strings, of course, and then fold it in half like this. Or keep this in mind for the next idea. Fold it in half like this to create a pouch. In fact, let's move on to idea number five, which is a pouch. I created a little journal companion, as you can see. They kind of go together and i think you now already know how to make this so this is how you make it you pop your thing inside you create a cover and now to create a pouch i've already done the sewing up and down the bottom and now instead of doing this what i was going to do i'm going to do this keep everything in place and now i'm basically going to take this to my sewing machine and sew the three sides down starting from up here all the way down down the bottom and up the top and finish up here. If you want, you don't have to sew the bottom. You don't have to have this uh, stitch here. You can have it kind of open like this, but I don't know. This time around, I might as well just do two stitches on the side and I'm gonna leave this. And here it is all sewn. There's my little part. It's looking absolutely disco ballish. <laughs> Has the sound, love it. And now at this point, you can choose your closure. As you've seen here, I use hook and loop type closure or velcro. You can have a hole here with an eyelet and then thread through a piece of string that you wrap around and that can be your closure. You can do the double string closure, two circles here, and then you have this kind of a closure. All right, I'm rummaging through my completed junk journal. Here it is, I have a tutorial on this one. This is the closure I'm talking about. You can do this kind of thing and I will put you probably know how to do it, but I filmed um, making this pocket and the closure and yeah, I'm going to link that video down below if you want to have a look. I'm actually going to sew on a button. I'm just going to sew it right on there. Okay, the button is sewn on and it actually keeps, the weight of the button keeps it closed. So what I was going to do is add this string. I did leave the button a little bit loose. Does it look better with the string? The button is totally sufficient to keep this little beauty closed. Well, looks like I've decided to add the string, so I'm just going to make sure that I have a double knot under the button. There we go. We can put in some lipsticks, a little mirror, a little lip pen, if that's your kind of thing. You know, you're going out to a fancy party. You can take your little... Uh, uh, uh. All right, let's move on. Idea number six is a very easy, straightforward one, and it's a clear pouch pocket, okay? We have a thing for pouches. Look at this. How much fun is this? Look, look, look. How cool is this? A little addition to a journal. You can put all of your stickers in there, all of your little things in there. And so the front, obviously, is a clear pouch, um, clear, you know, thing. And the back is also covered with the plastic of course so it's quite nice to have double-sided scrapbook paper which is what you need for this project now let me remember how i did this all right let's see i'm just using one of these again you know it all depends on whatever you have and open this up it's kind of scrunched up so it's not ideal but maybe it will add to the charm okay now we need scrapbook paper 
I'm gonna use this, it's double-sided, it's kind of not my favorite, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use it up. Now you wanna pop your paper in, but you wanna have margins on each side, so I'm just gonna tr trim the paper down, and I'm gonna open it on both ends, because it's just easier to work with, because this is all scrunched up on this side, so I want my paper to be the exact same size as the bag that I have here, and these bags are a bit wonky they're not straight up the top so they do give me a little bit of grief but it is what i have so i'm just going to work with it all right i'm going to trim my paper down again now this side has the sticky part i don't want the sticky part i'm just going to cut it off in your case it might be the flap of the bag you know and what i'm doing here is i'm utilizing the flap that's already there which is this one here i might have to trim my paper down a little bit more and this is basically what i'm doing you can see on this one here how I've nestled the paper in there. So I've nestled the paper in there. And now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a stitch up the top. Okay, that's done. And now ideally what will happen is you'll bring this part up and ideally it will be exactly the same kind of, or it will be in a straight line, which this one isn't. It's completely scrunched up and crooked. I'll make it work. Now we can add some lace or like what I did here, you can see a bit of lace here. You can see a pretty trim here. You might have it all the way up here, which is what I've done on both of these. But in this case, it's crooked. I don't know if you can see. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do. Maybe I can do something like this, something that's not straight and then try and, I don't know. So I've simply just created a new fold. I'm just going to try and get it straight from the get go. I decided to use this because you won't be able to see the black stitch as opposed to that pink one that I've shown you before. All right, I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and hope for the best. We can end up perhaps with something looking like this, which it wouldn't be too bad. It wouldn't be too bad at all if we have uneven top edge. Why does it have to be straight, you know? All right, so I've sewn that on. There it is on there. It's crunched up a bit messy, but are we going to be presenting the queen with this? No, we're going to be marked on this. Absolutely not. So it will do. At this stage, you want to obviously close the pocket. So again, just sewing the three sides, just like I did over here. You can see I'm going to go back to my machine and pop a few things down to hold it in place. And I'm just going to go and do the sewing. All right, so that's sewn all around. And now we can use the pinking shears for the sides here or straight scissors and just chop off all of the excess okay done and it turned out much better than anticipated and now i can go ahead and perhaps put in all of the leftover pieces that are left from doing this project little pouches of your leftover scrapbook paper that doesn't look nice a little something there a little gift a little gift for someone pretty cool at the back of a journal or first page of the journal of course these stickers i think i already said that so that is that one really what do you think okay idea number seven is frames we're gonna go through this quite quickly because i've already kind of demonstrated this with the flowers so basically if you have any frames in your stash stuff like this right or of course you can make your own i made this one but i wasn't paying attention to the to the words so i'm not going to be using that one in any projects but yeah so you just apply plastic and then just the same way like i've shown you previously when i was doing the dried flowers you can see here i used double-sided tape and at the front here i applied a sticker if i can turn it to the light you can see the outline of the sticker it's just a one of those transparent stickers and then when you're in your journal let's pretend this is a page in the journal I would use not double-sided tape. You could, but then every anything you put in your pocket potentially can, you know, get stuck onto the double-sided tape. So usually I would use glue to glue this down. And then whatever, whatever you have, you pop it into a pocket. It's see-through. Something like this. This is a whimsical mason jar. I have a tutorial, and you know, look at this. How cool! Doesn't even need the sticker here. How cool does that look? I'm going to link this tutorial down below. Whimsical Mason Jars. Extra bit of inspiration. Look at all these beautiful whimsical Mason Jars. I think I call them that. 
Mason jar. Mason jar galore. Well, have a look at that video when you finish watching this one. I was going to do this frame on video. I don't think I need to demonstrate because I have done it before with a double-sided tape and then you, you know, glue it down on your plastic packaging. And then I think this would look particularly stunning in a journal like this or maybe even like this love oh my goodness we are powering through steam train idea number eight is simply to create shapes it can be any shape here you can see i've made hearts and i have of course the sequin because why wouldn't you have sequin in there and this is just uh, some type of a mesh thing i think this is supposed to be like a table runner i found this at a two dollar shop it wasn't two dollars it was more expensive than that and i've been hoarding it i don't know why and this is what we did i have a template here that i drew just a heart which i've used in many different projects this one and then you get your desired piece of material maybe something that has a little bit of hold already so nothing flimsy so you can see how this has a little bit of hold as opposed to this so it's easier to work with something that's a little bit firmer so you can use upholstery fabric like whatever you have really stuff like this this would look cool and then the way that i do it is i apply double-sided sticky tape onto this heart which i then take off and i glue it down just so it's not moving around and then instead of using my straight scissors, which you can do, I use zigzag or pinking shears because you're not, you can't notice the unevenness as much when you use those scissors. And I just trace out, I cut out the heart. And then you have a heart shape. And let's pretend this is my material now. And then you grab your plastic, you put it in there, you take it to your sewing machine and you sew around. And if you wanna pop stuff in, like sequins and stuff like that you stop there and then you pop stuff in and then you sew it shut and what do you do with it like it's not something that you can utilize in a journal you know you can't write on it you could do room decorate i don't know i'm gonna i'm just making stuff up now you can do like room decoration you can do a little mobile thing that's hanging off the wall you can attach them like this here and then it can be hanging down in your room like a wind chime only it's not it's plastic chime you can just fidget no that's probably not something that people would do you can fill it up with buttons you can have little buttons in here give it as gift i don't know well i'm sure that you guys are having so many of your own ideas so far we're at idea number eight and I know that when I was making this project, I was just getting bombarded, literally bombarded by ideas that, that fast that I couldn't even write them down. I did not explore all of the things that you can do with plastic packaging. So I know for a fact that, that your brain is now going a million miles an hour and I would really appreciate it. And so will everyone else. If you write your ideas in the comment section down below so that everyone can kind of see everyone's ideas and we can try all sorts of different things okay let's move on to idea number nine i'm calling this a journal or a binder divider okay and i don't need to demonstrate because we're doing the exact same thing that we did for the fidget bookmarks exactly the same thing the only different thing that we're doing here is we're adding a, a strip of scrapbook paper so as you can see here the first thing that i did is a strip of a what am i saying textbook paper it can be like a whole page divider right so you put a strip of scrapbook paper then you put in your ribbon which i don't have space for here obviously but you put your ribbon down and then you sew the ribbon so the ribbon is kind of overlapping onto your paper and then you sew it down you sew it here you go up you stop you put in all of your bits and pieces that you want to put in while you're at the sewing machine. So you're sewing, then you can, when you stop, and then you can just pop stuff in and then sew it shut. And that's it, you're done. And then obviously, you know, we have the, the ring things here. So here's my, let's say, uh, this is just to demonstrate. Here's my yearly binder and I have pockets you know, for the month. And then when I have a bill due, it goes in that pocket. And, you know, this is, the kind, I know this is ugly. I don't have anything pretty at the moment to show you. But 
Imagine that being in your planner. My planner doesn't have any holes, but lots of those ring band planners do. In which case, of course, you have to make sure that your holes align with the planner that you're using. But anyway, that's the idea. Like that is so, I just, what is it about this? What is it about it? Some of you might be thinking, oh my goodness, that's like not cool at all. Or, you know, why would you waste your time making that? I, on the other hand, am thinking, I can't get enough of this. And that is the truth. There we have it. What do you think? What do you think? You need to let me know if you have any questions if i've kind of rushed through i don't want this video to be 10 years old i think i meant to say 10 hours long so i'm not demonstrating each piece so if you have any questions if something is unclear please let me know and i will do my best to explain it or to help you out but i can't get enough of this idea number 10 is tactile textural pocket fillers or general editions is the name I came up with because they're not functional. You don't, you can't do anything with them. They just exist. You can't write on them. You can't put stuff in them. They're not pouches. They're just little pieces of, and that's why I said in the name of this idea, tactile, because it's all about the fact that it's got the shine it's got the sound, the noise, and I know a lot of people love that and a lot of people don't. So it might be something that is for you or perhaps it's not for you. And the way that I did this is just a piece of fabric, a piece of whatever, uh, lace, fabric, whatever you have. In between sheets, sometimes I did just one sheet on each side. Sometimes I scrunched up. This is the very first thing that I made when I started this project. When I actually, I don't know if I mentioned, that I purchased some stuff and it all came in this, this amount of plastic packaging. And I threw it all into my bin, my craft bin. So there's no like food and stuff in there. I, I kind of was like popped it all in the bin. And then I thought I felt so bad and I was feeling resentful and angry that every single little thing that we buy nowadays has to be packaged individually in these, they're like, why? Why does everything have to be wrapped in plastic? We used to have plastic recycling here, but we don't anymore. So this all really goes into the bin. And then I pulled it all out of the bin and I thought, I really want to see if I can make something with this. This is how this project was born. This is the first, very first thing that I did. I just put a little bit of lace in between. I just did this. This is all I did. This is what I did, just like that. Put a little bit of something in there, whatever it was that was at hand. In this case, it's this green thing. Just like this, in this case, it was that purple lace and I sewn all around to see what, you know, and then it went from there basically. So that was a little bit of unnecessary information, but the reason why I'm mentioning it is because of the point that I made before where I said this has no actual purpose. It doesn't actually do anything. You just touch it and look at it in your journal. Now this one here, extra special to my heart. I'm not sure why it's not really, but I just kind of said that perhaps because i mentioned the threads previously so this here i don't know if you can see can you see i'll turn it towards the light i just put threads instead of material instead of uh, lace i just put threads in there and it's tricky because these threads sometimes can look like hair so um yeah now that i said it you know it's kind of a little bit disgusting why is it disgusting we have all this hair on our head and it's not disgusting and then you see one hair on the table and it's like oh the most disgusting thing in the world but here we go this is what i did with the threads and i put in some sequins in there just to make it because it just wasn't looking great it was looking like a bunch of hair <laughs> so hence the sequins in there and then so around and then i did this and another thing that you can do which was an idea that i didn't have time to actually um envision or to actually do it if you fold it like this how was it oh yes this way so if you make a little triangle like this and then you sew these two sides shut you leave this here open it can be a corner hugger on a page so instead of doing this sewing business here i would sew a line here sew a line here cut it off then you have two triangles that you then put together and then you sew sew and then you have this like 
pouchy thing that opens here and that can slide onto the page and it can be a bookmark. I didn't do it because I ran out of time and I already have bookmarks and stuff. And then this one here, it just is. It just is. I don't know what else to say about this. Just sewn plastic, sewn together. So you can, actually I do have an idea coming up that kind of looks something like this. So let's move on. Idea number 11 is specimen cards. So I don't know, this isn't really a specimen, but it's here because I'm just showing it to you. It's very similar to what we did with the frame, with the flower. But I was thinking of these as being kind of like the specimen, you know, with the number here. I actually made a few more, I don't know where I put them, but it's different to this because we were focusing here on preserving the flowers, the dried flowers. So this is more the specimen card kind of thing. And then usually they will have specimen number or I have all of a sudden lost my words. So I'm just going to show you what I mean. This kind of thing, you know, number or you can have specimen and then you can have all these different butterflies in there. Kind of like, you know, this kind of can be a little bit of inspiration here. You see that you can have actual dried flowers in there. So let's move on from this idea. It's driving me a bit crazy. Let's move on to idea number 12, which is right in here. And it is top of the page bookmark. So you use your scrap pieces of paper. You put it in between two sheets of plastic like this. You sew the three sides shut. And then you put in some fun stuff because why wouldn't you? I also have this. I don't even know what this is. Some type of a... Thing. See that? That can go right in there too. Why not? And then you want something on the top that's going to act as a stopper. So it can be anything, it can be a bit of ribbon, and you just sew the top part of the ribbon, and then you have this to tuck your page under or to tuck over your page. I do have this black ruffled, but I'm not sure actually. I thought it's going to look good. Maybe I can do two layers. I could do something like this. Or I can just stick with this one, which I think is what I'm going to do. And now I'm just going to take it back to my sewing machine and just do a stitch up the top. And now I'm just going to cut all around. I'm using my pinking shears. Keep all the shred. And there it is. How cool. Nothing on the back. You could do the same thing, exactly the same thing on the back as well. And now it's important for this to be, don't sew it down on the sides because then you can't kind of pop it on top of your page. Let me get my book. Here's a book I recently fin finished reading and let's say I'm up to page 119. I pop this down and there's my little bookmark. And when you feel like scrolling instead of reading, you can calm yourself down by, I don't know, fiddling. Tell yourself, no scrolling for you, not touch on. no, no, no. Idea number 13 is a shaker card. And now I'm starting to think they're all shaker cards, like all these things with the sequence. The sequence, I never know what to do with. And now all of a sudden, they're everywhere. So here are two book pages that I've put together and I have a plastic bit in between. I actually used my die cut to make this tag shape. And I made another thing that doesn't actually serve any purpose. It's just like a, I call it a shaker card. It's not a card, but uh, you can take this idea in, in thousands of different directions. But I'm going to have a play around with this. So here's a card. I'm going to cut out a shape. I'm actually going to cut it out on both panels. Here we go. I didn't do it very straight, did I? And now I have tags too. Okay, now I'm going to grab my little piece of plastic. So two layers of plastic we have here. And now I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and sew three sides. Leave one open so that I can pop in sequins in there. And once the sequins are in, then I'm going to shut it off. And here we go. I probably could have put more sequins in there, but there it is. So now what I did with this one is I shut it completely. So I could go around and completely shut this, you know. So then it's, what is it? It's just a shaker card. I could have left this alone and now I could go ahead and cover this with another piece of paper so then it's an actual card if that makes sense or I could just sew the three this that's what I'm gonna do just sew here and then it's a pocket and here we go it's a little pocket 
Oh, but wait, it is not. So I'm gonna have to. Oh, I'm going to have to do another stitch up here. And I really should have. I should have really, when I was sewing this, it should have been closed like this. Because now, anyway, it will be fine. Here we go. It's done. It, it is what it is. So this one's a bit more fun because it's got more sequins here. I don't know, half of them went on the floor and half went on top. And that's what happens when you're in a bit of a rush because this video is taking much longer than anticipated. And I have kids to pick up from school. So let's get cracking, shall we? Idea number 14. Yes, there's more than 13. Idea number 14 is charms. And this is pretty self-explanatory. I just made, look at this. This is just an off cut of that piece that I was using before. And I just made, what would you call it? It's a charm, like a little charm or a little tag. Or here I have a sticker just on plastic. So basically I just grab my leftover pieces of plastic like this. And I take them to my sewing machine and I stick a sticker on top. These stickers are stuck right on top of the plastic. And then we have this butterfly is in between the plastic. So it's not on top. So if you're scared of your stickers kind of coming off, you know, this is uh, like a post card, uh, post, what's it called? Postage stamp. And that's also in between the layers of, you know, plastic. And then I have this, I don't know what this is. What is it? I think it was a... Uh, idea I was testing out you can see my sewing it's all over the place so that's all it is you just sew you can sew hearts you can uh, let your imagination take control okay all right we're nearly at the end so this is just extras there's some extra ideas in here that you can explore so here I did like a little pillow it's actually pillow stuffing inside. Again, of course, I know you're sh absolutely shocked to see the sequins in here, but it just makes the whole project. And then what do I have? Do I have like a... Oh, yes. So there's a, a little pocket in the back. I don't know what you would do with it, but it can be your dollhouse, miniature dollhouse little pillow. Okay. Then what do we have over here? This idea I did very late last night and... I don't know if I wanted to kind of keep exploring, but you might. So basically all I did here is melted the plastic with my heat gun and arranged it into a flower looking shape. So, and then I have the, the shank button thing. I actually sewed the plastic first and then I used a hot glue gun to glue this down. It's something you can play around with. I just grabbed some plastic, a long strip of plastic, and I arranged it into a somewhat circular kind of a look, I suppose you can say. And then I took my heat gun and I was heating the sides. Now, this is not something that I recommend that you do for hours at a time because there might be a smell that I assume is not very good for you to be inhaling melting plastic. <laughs> so do keep that in mind. And there we have it. Okay. Another one that I did, this actually came out of, it's very hard to see because it's see-through. I was trying to make a butterfly, like a see-through butterfly. You can do this with colored cellophane. And the butterfly thing did not work. So I ended up just crunching it in the middle and making a little bow. And that there is a brad. You can see it at the back. And yeah, I don't know. Can you be bothered doing something like this? I did these two very late last night as well. And... I do like the idea. See that? I do like it. So there we have there we have it. That's that's that is it. So let us recap real quick. Idea number one is the fidget bookmarks. Idea number two is the pencil case or pouch. Idea number three is preserving dried flowers. Oh love. Idea number four is the journal cover. Idea number five are the fancy pouches. Fancy, fancy. Idea number five is the clear pocket pouch. Idea number seven are the frames. Idea number eight are the shapes. In this case, heart shapes. I can't fit everything. Idea number nine is the journal or binder divider. Idea number 10 are the tactile and textural journal fillers or pocket fillers or journal editions. I don't know what I call them now. Idea number 11 are the specimen cards. Okay, that's an intruder. Specimen cards. 
Idea number 12 are top of the page bookmarks. I just want everything to be visible, but it's impossible. Idea number 13 are the shaker cards. Idea number 14 are the charms. And idea number 15 are the extras. We have a pillow. You can lay your head on if you wish to have an extra crunchy night. We have some flowers and we have some bows. So that, my lovelies, concludes today's video. I hope you got lots of inspiration and you have lots of your own ideas, which I'm hoping that you're sharing in the comments section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're still here at the end of the video. A lot of people leave. And then you know what happens then? Then they miss out. Yes, they miss out. And then they'll ask me questions, which were answered later on in the video. So there's that. <laughs> But I want to thank you, you, my lovely, for being here with me today, for watching this video, for sticking to the end and leaving me a comment and being the beautiful, creative soul that you are. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.